Welcome to our Frontiers Web Extra. This week, we are talking about the alcohol tax that uh, will be on the ballot for Anchorage voters in this municipal election. Money is supposed to go with home to homeless services. And we're going to talk with Nancy Burke some more. Uh, we talked a little bit on the show, but uh, you are Anchorage's Housing and Homeless Services Coordinator. That is a, a mouthful to say, but a, but a huge job. What, you know, a lot of people that I talk to, you know, they point to your job and they say, wouldn't it be better to have the money go to the, to the people? I mean, so, I mean, you're under fire a little bit. And, you know, they want to know, what is it that you do? <laughs> Well, Anchorage relies on a nonprofit sector, several nonprofit sectors, to help us solve some uh, social problems. And it's not always a recognizable thing that what government can do is coordinate those sectors so that we can ensure we get the best use out of everyone's dollars. Many of the residents are providing money to these nonprofits, and without coordination or without helping to establish a cohesive plan, um, people kind of just do what, the thing that they're doing. And so that's that's my primarily my job. So give me one of your aha moments when you connected uh, some agencies or groups together and what was the result? Well, there was, uh, if, you, if you look at um, 2017, there was a time when the federal government made a change to some funding programs for um, assistance to get people into apartments and then separated out the social services. And so we had a number of opportunities for people to get into units, but there weren't social services connected and the, the social service side of the house wasn't nearly uh, very aware that people were getting into units and it was oh okay of course so one hand we have not to knowing. connect them to each other and then people who get into units have a social service provider and can be successful so let's talk a little bit about what this tax is going to do we did on the show talk a little bit about the skepticism people have that it's going to get uh, frittered away in the bureaucracy of government what are you going to do to ensure that this money is very targeted and very focused if the tax passes? Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, see how the tax comes out. We're, we're positive that people are ready for some of the changes that we're talking about. And some of the language, like public safety, is something that we do intentionally want to leave a bit open for future. Because so that's a big see, basket. I mean, yeah. and that might not include the homeless, maybe. <laughs> Right now we have, correct, right now we have some issues around people who have addictions that are um, doing behaviors that are, you know, preying on neighborhoods. We also have a homeless problem, but in the future it could be something different. Families might need some assistance getting to treatment and staying together. And so you want it to be broad, but some examples in that public safety bucket, if you will, could be expansion of the safety patrol, which right now only operates in downtown and midtown. Muldoon doesn't, isn't able to access that service. Um, South Anchorage, so that would be one thing. Another thing may be helping um, community members come together to work on their own areas. So community watch, trail watch, even in downtown the ambassadors, those are kinds of things that this fund could help create more eyes and ears which makes it safer for everyone. Well one of the things uh, that we keep hearing from the homeless and those who have recovered is that the treatment services aren't available when they're ready to take advantage of them, that they have to be sober to be screened. Uh, what, what can be done about that to get rid of the catch-22s? There are three areas that are needed on this, and two of them are in the public discussion around the state budget. The Medicaid program has been redesigned to prioritize access to substance use treatment. We desperately need those services to not be cut from our Medicaid array. And, so, and the governor is looking at cutting Medicaid. The governor is looking at cutting $700 million from Medicaid, which primarily would be that access to treatment. But we also need the facilities. So one of the one of the major construction projects in the alcohol tax planning is more treatment uh, for people. We need people to be able to go to treatment on that day they decide. It can't be a you know, two weeks from now. If you're still around, we'll get you into this program. It has to be 
quicker. It has to be in that day. And then the third thing is the grants that fuel the nonprofits. The nonprofit sector, um, for instance, those under the mental health arena, have not received increments in their cost of in their grants for doing business in 10 years. So what sector could take really the decrements over those years as costs of operating go up, there's been no increases in those, um, those allocations for the nonprofits to do the work that we expect. You know, and I, of concern has been the situation at the Alaska Psychiatric Institute, which had some problems. So the mentally ill had to be housed in the jails. Were some of those homeless people? Absolutely, a number of them. And one of the things we've been looking at under the alcohol tax is to create more stabilization resources. So something like a crisis stabilization center that could help take the burden off of emergency departments that are seeing some of those people through emergency. And then the API crisis is, is a true crisis. They haven't been able to maintain safe operations for staff or the, the people seeking treatment. And the, the governor's proposed budget had a $3 million reduction while also planning for privatization. A 2016 study showed that privatiz privatization of that facility would cost more, not less. So I don't understand how you reduce the revenue and look at increasing the costs at the same time. It makes no sense. I just have one more question for you is, is people feel like, like people like yourself just stay in their offices, crunch numbers, and have no connection with reality. And like in, in Midtown, for example, there's a homeless camp. It's very entrenched, and the community is really frustrated that, that it, it's still there. It, you know, it's a moving target. People get evicted, they come back, and they haven't really seen a lot of effort to, from the city's part. So they're skeptical that they, they just don't uh, feel like the city has any credibility sure. in, in situations like that. You know, what's the city's explanation for this of why some of these camps just stay so entrenched? We have actually, if you go to the city's website and look on the mayor's corner in our housing and homeless page, we document in 2018 that we did, we really almost doubled the number of abatements on these camps. The problem comes in that we don't have enough money to clean up as soon as we're, we give the legal notice. If we can move this system faster so that we clean up as soon as there's a legal notice, and then we have the referral for someone to go to a housing program or shelter where they can engage with someone to help them move out of that situation. If you don't work it as a whole system, it's not effective. And I, I would invite those folks who are concerned that I just sit at my desk and crunch numbers to go with me because I'm actually in those locations. I don't feel that we can represent the work unless we know it from the ground up. And we, you know, I, I hear the message, it's not fast enough, but I would say vote for this tax and, and help us. All right, well, I want to thank you very much, Nancy Burke, who is Anchorage's Housing and Homeless Services Coordinator. And uh, we will have a lot of interesting people uh, that you'll hear from on, on this week's show. <laughs> so be sure and watch Frontiers this Sunday on KTVA.